certain ways that things act, and so the more that you can compare the start of the universe, because you know that's already been acted, with dialects of the overtone of freedom ringing, and you have to be cheesy like that because there are certain things, the dynamics, that have two properties instead of one, like color changing items. So the easiest things in nature would be the things that are most prevalent, and then utilizing them with ease would be the definition of how much you could cataclysmically manipulate reality. It's hard to put your thumb on a lot of things that could be easier said if you could just see it get done. That's why handhelds are so important because they always have display screens on them. If you could actually differentiate how smart PhD students are compared with how simplistic special needs people have needs for things, devices. And so combining whatever technology PhD people use in their day-to-day -day and seeing the difference of all these different devices, whether it be hearing, seeing, you know, display screen or earbuds in order to have things be amplified in sound so people hard at hearing can hear it. So dividing these two things with something that I keep explaining, it's like an almanac, I mean an encyclopedia for an entirety, um, and then like the entirety would be from the Big Bang explosion into moments of whatever you're doing during the daytime. Because history repeats itself, and so if you're cataloging things that happened in the Big Bang, specifically, um, you can get like an arc to the time of being where you are currently. And why this would be important is the exchange of information um, in the most fundamental aspects. Those times would be it. So your specific thing at what you're doing versus the specific thing that was occurring at the Big Bang most likely in its most fundamental generic state to help aid you. So the important why crystals are important isn't for cloak and daggers type things. If your cord wraps around a tree, it's gonna break if you keep moving from it. That's how we keep dogs leashed. The arbitrariness of atoms can only amount to the definition of what their crystal lines are. And that's why that's an identity occurrence of tracking and tracing. The same hydrogen and helium has ways of tracking itself because it performs laws only of its own. There are entire laws dedicated to hydrogen and helium and how they interact with light or solids. Can you write absolute definitions of other elements that are less abundant than hydrogen and helium? given those are the top two. Is this sort of an occurrence for any element? And the more you can do this, the more you can define the characteristics of the reality, given that everything's are made up of elements. Or there's still yet more to discover. And then write characteristic definitions for those in order to categorize the entire table to the tune of how the Big Bang started, because that's a specific crystalline structure in defiant of time, specifically, that has already occurred indefinitely. So the first map out the Big Bang with a whole bunch of different crystalline structures to better utilize what elements currently, if there's any more to figure out, would be 
important in order to know. Making Shang Tsung's power work where he changes into different individuals just from the holographic nature principle alone. And if there's photons that categorize things, then they could be looked at the most easiest SSD drives possible. Could these colloquial senses be utilized over a larger landscaping for hardwiring things? Understanding that crime happens when people are misinformed, and the more that you can speak on things that are handled with professionalism, but at a second glance is easier than what they're doing. It's like what AI does, but without needing it. Just hold it. Fuck it. I'd like to share with you a few things that I've learned today. For one, simplicity is done with great orchestration. And that's sometimes difficult to do. So you've got to start with yourself, a person. And in describing what's a person is entirely different than a person to person. Speaking for everyone is how to get personable from yourself to others. And this is really important. Because it just might what mean to being bloodborne. In denying the fact that, you know, when a water breaks, that's a sign of humanity being born from blood. What does that even mean? Is that uh, logistically sound? Just these two things given have immense meaning behind them. Think of water and liquid. When you put it into a cup, there's no air pockets in it. None that we can calculate for bare eyes. So that holds a lot of gravity behind it. Other things such as light, when a light is enhanced or reduced, it can make things disappear. This can be said for a new language to be taught at, common sense, but moreover, within computers, if you got a really slow one and you're trying to get the internet, just logging on without getting the internet is sometimes really difficult. But if you knew what programs you opened up to make it go even slower, would there be a process in opening the right amounts with doing just enough clicks to make everything operate under 15 minutes. So I hate an important lectures, you can watch them online at major institutions including Stanford, where someone smart they get talking and uh, they give an introduction for a minute, maybe five minutes, if they're really like catering to the people they're lecturing to. And so then they go from the introduction into the middle of the segment, which seems to be the bulk of it for the duration after the introduction. But the amount of skill level from zero meaning when they first start their introduction with their name into the bulk of it is like an accelerated rate and then theories start breaking down as opposed to them just trying to build up the impetus of the lecture so then specifics with healing how complex am I gonna get when it comes to um, pinpointing things and then on the other side of the spectrum is diet and it's 
one and the same, but a whole different battle. Do you think all the people who've done war, the good guys have always won? And the winners always write the history books. Put two and two together for one minute. <sighs> With that being said, um... And so I think it's just the excitement at seeing how similar the uh, state of the art equipment from PhD gadget. For one example, a C. Uh, I just start rambling off a whole bunch of high tech machinery. There's social security. I mean, the um, security in the airports, those are identifying equipment so there's security systems and then um storinators and destroyinators for computers but it's just a fun at seeing how similar those are to what a person who would be um needing extra help to do stuff with So if you're trying to rehabilitate a broken collarbone, you'll have your back shoulder blade popping out because your collarbone most likely healed on top of itself, so there's an inch of separation. That inch of separation, when it is contorted with all your muscles, the biggest ones being like around your chest and shoulder to the back, um, is going to be more than an inch in displacement because goes from one inch into your shoulder blade is at a different direction and wider so a different direction and wider would account for a larger displacement so bears they rub their trees up against uh, like wooden trees I mean they brush their backs up against trees that are wood and this is to align their spine and everything so, um, the displacement with my broken collarbone and shoulder blade, if you're pushing up on, like, a bar that is on wheels, it feels really good. So, it's just getting the bar pushed back far enough so that it stays still. Um, and so that alignment works out well. But it's the whole disalignment in reaching that point of access that really helps. So that's one way at looking at across the board.